been a while. This oven boxes the bills. We'll call it number eight, and we're pulling some quasi bore through iron. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here, six time top 100 club fitter with Golf Digest. And today we are going to talk about pulling a shaft from a bore through. Now, that's kind of a misnomer. And, and that was the whole intent, I think. We are going to be pulling some shafts from some Callaway Steelhead XRs. Okay? And this is the XR Pro. Now, when these came out, the idea was that we were going to, we, the company, was going to reinvent the steelhead line. It had been a while since we saw the word steelhead from Callaway. And they came out with the regular steelheads and the steelhead pros. Steelhead pros actually had quite a nice shape. They didn't have too much sole, just a hint of offset, and they had what was called a bore through. We're going to see this right here. See that little knob right there? That's the bore through, sort of. And so what it is, is it, a, is it a bore through? Is the head truly a bore through? The answer to that is yes, it is truly a bore through. However, is it a bore through in the general sense of the term that the shaft goes all the way through the head? The answer to that is no, no it is not. And that's where it becomes kind of a problem. So this is no different than any other shaft pole. It's got the ferrule. Normally you heat up into the hosel, you would come up into this neck of the woods and you go through that way. And you, would, and you would pull an iron just like you would normally in it. And there's plenty of videos out there to see that, including some of my channel. However, with that right there, that is in the same kind of material that your ferrule's made out of, so it's heat sensitive. And so you want to maintain this because nobody makes a plug for this thing. Uh, and Cowboy's not going to give you any because most likely they don't have any either now because this club is years old. And so you got to be careful on how we're going to do that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you that how a technique to take this off without tearing that up, okay? And, and then we're going to talk about uh, just a real quick putting it back together. So let's go to the bench. take off this is the pitching wedge and we found by certain removals over here by the number of removals we've done that the the ferrule needs to go and so what we're doing is we're trying to heat up the the hosel and the ferrule itself so that it will let go and you can pull it out easy just like that now you're going to see that we got it oh Jim you burnt this uh, that'll go away here in just a little bit you'll see so now what we do is we avoid that guy by staying down in this neck of the woods for about 30 seconds. That neck of the woods is pretty cool since it's kind of the neck of the club. And then we go on the opposite side for the same amount of time. The whole idea is we're avoiding that area that it has that cap in it because the minute you hit it with a little bit of heat it's going to melt, it's going to bubble, it's not going to look like the original and you know that's not the point here. The point here is to turn it around and make it look as good if not better than when we change it out. And it pulls out and there you go. Now that we've had the now that we've turned the epoxy into kind of a dust, we've got to clean it out. <laughs> so 
So this uh, this particular club head has a shoulder in it like most of the steel heads do, or most of the Callaways do for that matter. And what we're doing is you want to make sure that the shoulder area is clean and then that the hosel area is clean. There we go. So now we're cleaning that area. We can see that, I don't know. There we go. I'll try and get you a shot in here. There we go. See that? Nice and clean in there. So now what we got to do is get rid of all that burning. And that's just a trip to the wavy or to the glands wedge wheel. So what we do here is we put it on the glands wedge wheel, and next thing you know, it's uh looking good and we're ready to go do the rest. So let's do the rest. And we'll just uh, take the last two apart and we'll get going. the heads pulled and now we need to uh, put this back together so what I've used is something that I would you know I always try to typically get back to the original however they didn't have it so 
what we're going to do is we're going to use this slightly taller one. Now these are Callaway ferrules and that was the reason why I wanted to use these because they have a, a larger collar to fit into the larger space here. All right, so as a gluing technique number one, I always like to put a little bit under the ferrule so it prevents it from sliding. Then you don't have to goober it up real bad, but I like to get enough there so that it totally coats the inside of the, the inside of the hosel so that we know we're going to get 100% adhesion. Now these things tend to like to slide. And then you, what you want to do is just wipe all that excess. All right, you want to clean up the, the shaft so you don't have to do it later. Make sure it's nice and tight. Wipe down all the access that you've got there. There we go. And then I like to try and seat it by hitting it on a piece of wood. A little piece of tape to prevent the ferrule from coming down. And then onto the rack it goes. All right, so let's try that again. A little bit of glue, ferrule, and I'm looking for the seven iron. Got the seven iron, push it down. You know, you get to see how much of the shaft is exposed. So you don't need a whole lot to make it go. I tend to spin the shaft into it. Make sure it's all distributed good. You look inside the hosel. It's all nice and black. Maybe a little extra dab just for a security blanket. And there we are, we're lined up. Tap it on the wood. Come on back and wipe everything off. There's a, see that little bit of a gap right there. Push it up. Squeeze out a little more glue, which is fine. You always want to have enough of these guys standing by. There we go. Nice and clean. I'm taking all my time now because it's just going to be a giant uh, pain in the butt later if with cleaning. So it's easy to get it done now. Pay me now or pay me later. Up onto the rack it goes. So I'm going to finish the rest of these and we'll see how they all turned out. <laughs> all right, we got all the heads off and we did it without damaging any of the decorative pieces. The idea is, is that's a cap that can't readily be replaced unless you just fill it up and flatten it out, which then again just detracts from the original look of the club. We don't want that. So we had to avoid the heating of the area because you really didn't need to. It's right in the hosel area most in the top inch, inch and a quarter, and you saw how we avoided it, and then just was able to pull it off, and that was really what you want to do. Now, sometimes they will get jammed up. They will, they will get to a point where uh, maybe they rust together or something like that. There's some sort of bonding that's beyond just being able to twist it. We'll put it in the shaft puller. 99 times out of 100, that works. Then you get the, well, it never wants to come out. Well, this is where it might take a few applications of heat in order to get where it needs to go. Sometimes there's a swelling going on and I know you're talking about two pieces of metal but there is a there's a point where they can do that but you just give it enough heat and that because of the black covering you have to be careful about that and approach it differently than if it was a chrome covered piece. So you get the you know you get it nice and warm try it let it set for a little bit and I'm, you know, five, 10 minutes, do it again and keep going and eventually it will come out. Sometimes they're just troublesome is all it is to it. So what we get in there too is, um, you know, I used a, a longer ferrule and it was an actual Callaway ferrule. And the reason being is it had a little bit more insertion for the collar into the shoulder. And I did have some other ones, but um, I just didn't like the way they fit and these fit better. Now, Jim, it's a steel shaft. Could you have just gone without a collar? Yeah, the answer is yes, I could have, but I wanted it to be closer to the intent of it because uh, you guys didn't see it, but there's a lot of dirt, so this guy is getting into the dirt. So I wanted to have as much support as possible. 
And that's why, the reason why I did it. Now, does it look bad? No, it just looks different. It doesn't look gross. I, I didn't put some stupid color on there that would have been ugly, you know, like a, an orange or something like that. However, that's what we did. So now they're up there drying. We're going to finish them and grip them just like we do any other time. But the idea here was just to show you about dealing with what the fake, non-fake bore throughs. <laughs> and that's how you get them off of there. So if you got any questions, put them in the show notes. And as always, let's see your scores go low.